Hi, I'm going to be talking to you today about making a slug to slug a 9mm Beretta 92FS. The reason I'm making this video is because initially when I went online or I read literature about slugging the barrel of my Beretta, the hardest part was figuring out how to actually make a slug. Now, it's not rocket science to say that you need to drive a lead slug through a barrel. Obviously, that's a pretty simple procedure. But when I went online to YouTube videos and I would watch how they would do it, they're taking a round ball, something such as that would be shot out of a uh, musket or a muzzle loader, and driving it through a cylindrical barrel that's rifled, pulling it out and measuring it with a caliper. I'm an auto mechanic. I was not satisfied with this method, although I haven't even done it yet. The reason is, is the round ball is going to rock and tilt as it goes through. It gives you a very short area to measure, and I wanted a full-size slug, very similar to a bullet. And that's exactly what started me on my quest. The method that I found worked beautifully, and I'd like to share it with you guys, because I've uh, found many videos on YouTube that were uh, very helpful. Okay, so the picture that you're looking at right now is the actual part of this whole process that was driving me crazy. They show you a photo of a perfectly slugged piece of lead. Well, if I had one like that, then I wouldn't need to make it. Obviously, this thing has been driven in and sized, and voila, perfect, beautiful slug. How do you get to that? So that's what I'm going to show you right now. We're at our worktop. I'm going to go over a couple of the items that you're going to need in order to slug your barrel, and the method that I'm using is uh, pretty basic, so this is what you're going to have to start with a kinetic bullet puller to be able to drive the slug out of the uh, fired case, a small torch to heat your lead up, a small pocket screwdriver, dowel rod. Everybody uh, I've seen has been using wood dowels. I didn't have any in the house. I found a fiberglass rod, something that you'd have like as a yard sign. I ground it down with a bench grinder and I'm actually happy because it has a lot of virtue over wood. It won't mar your barrel, yet it's got a hell of a lot more strength than a dowel rod, so you don't have to worry about it busting off and lodging up with the lead slug inside of your barrel. The lead that I'm casting with today is uh, fishing weights. I'm using a large one here. You can use any size fishing weights. The nice thing about them is, is the lead content is pure lead. They're nice and soft, so you don't have to worry about trying to hunt it down. The barrel that we're actually going to be slugging and a dial caliper uh, so that we can measure our finished product. I'm going to zoom in. What I have here is a, is a lead ingot that I had cast previously for uh, the actual bullets that we make. I have a brand new round, a disassembled round of the bullet and the case and then the finished product. If you notice on this slug that we have, the, the nice things about this method is is that we're actually using a fired case, the brass, as our crucible so that this is our mold to pour our lead in. The nice thing about it is, is the case wall is thicker at the bottom where the primer goes in and what that does is that gives you a nice slight tapered edge on the front of your bullet or on the front of your, your lead slug so that when you go to drive it in the barrel you're not fighting it right off the bat. It feeds right in there beautifully and as you can see, let's see if I can get a that's about as far as we can zoom in. As you can see, these riflings picked up beautifully. I mean, perfectly exact. So now, what I was talking about earlier is you don't have a round ball. My caliper is flat. It measures flat. I want to see a nice bearing surface that I can actually get a reliable read on, not a round ball. So let's uh, go ahead and start doing this. What got me started on this is if you take a bullet, brand new almost fits into the barrel so that's a good starting point right we want something about this size the problem I was having with this whole deal was that I didn't want to take a piece of a hunk of lead that was much bigger than the barrel and try to jam it in there if you take a uh, case nine millimeter is head spaced on the front of the rim being that that's what stops the case at the proper point inside of the barrel so now where the bullet actually feeds into the barrel, this fits in perfectly, but obviously it doesn't fit into the barrel. And that's what gave me the idea of using this as my casting crucible. So now let me zoom in here. So 
So I take my virgin lead fishing weight. Now I'm using my small pocket torch. You don't have to rush it. Lead begins to melt around 600 degrees. And you're going to watch this uh, fishing weight just drop right in there. And I just got lucky by playing with the fishing weights I've got. And this one happened to be a good size. So now I'm actually going to take the dross off the top so that we have a fairly clean slug. So now we're going to let that cool and in a minute we're going to drive it out with the kinetic bullet puller.